Numbers for French. Two and two overall this year. Pitched pretty well in his first outing. It's a good fastball, by the way. And his defense. Saunders, Gutierrez, and Ichiro. Beltre, Wilson, Lopez, and Brandon across the infield. And Kenji will do the catching tonight. Luke French in his uh, first outing uh, was a winner for the Mariners as he went uh, five innings. That was a game when the Mariners really gave him some great support, beating Kansas City 11 to 6. He gave a couple of two run home runs, one to Billy Butler and one to Alex Gordon. And basically, what hurt him uh, was first pitches. Uh, a lot of guys jumped on first pitches. Well, and that's one thing that they would like for him to do is concentrate on that throw first pitch strikes a little more often. And he does right here to start matters off with Angel Hernandez calling balls and strikes. And a ground ball over the mound headed into center field into center field. So Scott Pacetic, the ex Mariner, with 17 stolen bases. Got to keep your eye on him. 68 degrees at game time. Hardly a murmur of a breeze out of the south at a mile an hour. And here's the kid from Georgia, former number one draft choice of the White Sox last year. Came up as a shortstop. They moved him to third base. He's still learning the rudiments of playing third base. But boy, is he hitting well. His name is Gordon Beckham. He's hitting 302 with a half a dozen home runs, 40 RBIs. And he is murder with men in scoring position. City 400 men in scoring position. Got good power. Foul back and out of play. Well, George has got a good baseball program. Mariners get a couple of kids from that organization, not from that college, and trying to sign, of course, their number one still. By the way, they got five more days to do that. And the throw to first, and they got him! They nailed the second. He was gone. Take a look at it, Pod Sednik. Really wasn't leaning, just standing there. Didn't pick up the move at all from French. Pick him off easily. Nice move. And Lance Barksdale rings him out of there. And a swing and a miss. 91 mile an hour fastball. We saw this in his last outing. Pretty good fastball, 92, 93 miles an hour. This one a 91 mile an hour fastball and ties Beckham up. Nice pitch inside. And here is Jermaine Dye. Of course, the big story of the day involving the White Sox, the fact that they have picked up Alex Rios in a waiver claim from Toronto, and they are picking up a huge part of his salary. He still owed $63 million to play baseball through 2014. He will be with the ball club tomorrow night. And Jermaine Dye takes his second pitch outside ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Hitting 264, 14 home runs, 62 RBIs this year with the Blue Jays. He's now a member of the White Sox. And a ground ball to third and nicely fielded. The easy play for Mr. Beltre. And he throws out Jermaine Dye. So here in the first, it ends up being a one, two, three inning. Although there was a hit in the inning, go to the bottom of the first. There is no score.
Time for the Mariners now to come to the plate against uh, tough right-hander Gavin Floyd. So let's look at their lineup. For the Mariners tonight, leading things off will be Ichiro. Gutierrez stays hitting second, and it's Lopez Griffey back in the lineup. He will hit fourth. Beltray, Brandon Wilson, Jojima the catcher will hit eighth, and Saunders will hit ninth. Take a look at Floyd and the numbers for him this year. Really nice year. Nine wins already. 3.91 ERA. Look at 145 innings pitch. 122 strikeouts. And behind it will be Quinn Potsetnik and Die in the outfield. In the infield will be Beckham, Ramirez, Nixon, Canerco. And Ichiro takes uh, the first pitch high ball one. One and oh. Since the beginning of July, Gavin Floyd is six and one. The 2.34 ERA. He's been the White Sox best pitcher. And each row a high fly ball to right field. And Jermaine Dye will coast over there, still on the grass, and make the catch for out number one. Just missed that one. And Franklin Gutierrez will be the hitter. The day yesterday afternoon, three a day, a couple of RBIs. Did the same thing on Saturday, three hits with a home run. Look, we'll give him that one day off about a week, 10 days ago, and I think that rejuvenated him. I said, Lou, didn't I? <laughs> I meant what? Walk gave him a day off that went along with an off day, so he actually had a couple of days off, and he's played much, much better. Struggling just a little bit going into that day off. And that's how, speaking of Lou, he with the Cubs. Ian with the White Sox. I, I, I didn't think that the town was big enough for both of them, but I guess apparently it has been. Certainly two of the more colorful managers in baseball in the Windy City. Both of them will speak their mind, won't they? And that's a strike call. And certainly Ozzy Gian did yesterday after the Cleveland game. He said, tired of having my men thrown at. He said, I don't care if they're not throwing at them, if they get hit. My guys are going to hit your guys. He said, if you don't know how to pitch inside, don't pitch inside. I don't understand that. He's trying to scare other pitchers from pitching inside, or at least trying to. I'd rather have me suspended for two games than have my players on the DL for 30. He also referenced Canerco because Canerco was hit yesterday and he said that he has bruises up and down his body because he's getting hit so much. What do you think? They're going to make a real run at it? I mean, they've got Jake Peavy about ready to come back. Sign him as a, with a deal with San Diego. Well, I don't see why not. They're only three games back of the Tigers right now. And a ground ball comebacker. They play like Floyd. Two down. And Jose Lopez will be the hitter. Talk about the money that they have picked up in PV and certainly with Rios today. Next year they're going to have, if they don't tender contracts, to Tommy, Die, and Contreras, some $34 million off the books. But with the year that Tommy is having, if they don't sign him, somebody's going to sign Jim Tommy. Anthony Eves, one ball, one strike. I bet they sign him. Probably a guy that's wondering is die just because Rios has played right field for Toronto. I don't know. If he's thinking about that or not. And there he is. Terrific hitter. He can just about put his numbers up on the board every year. And a breaking ball and a two hopper. Beckham has it. And a one, two, three Mariner first inning. We go to the second inning of play. Tommy Canerco and Quinton coming up. No score.
Welcome back to Mariners Baseball on FSN. The Tracer is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Well, some signs for some uh, rally fries. Eat your rose cousin, I'll bet. <laughs> Here is Tommy now. French for the fastball. Uh, actually, a little bit off the fastball. A little bit low and inside. Ball one, one ball and no strikes. Tommy with the shift on hits one in the shallow right field. For Lopez is stationed. And he's thrown out. Jim Tommy's next home run is going to time with Reggie Jackson. For 12th on the all time list at a 563. Tommy's got some Hall of Fame numbers. I don't think there's any doubt about it. 1,557 RBIs. His next walk will time with the walking man Eddie Yost for 10th all time. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I do too. Here's Canerco. And inside. I don't think he's done yet either. No, I, <laughs> he has a real chance to get 600 home runs. Tommy will be 39 on the 27th of August. 2 0. 563 home runs? Yes, 562 now. Next will be 563. Reggie, yeah. And that's a strike. Two and one. Nice change. Ball. It's popped up. And charging in under the ball, the youngster Michael Saunders makes the easy grab for out number two. Saturday, August the 29th, the end of the year. Girlfriends and head out to Safeco Field for a girls' night out. At the Mariners Royals game, the first 10,000 women, 21 and over, take home a stylish, reusable bag. Plus, there'll be manicures, massages, more surprises throughout the night. Get your tickets at Mariners.com. Here's Carlos Quinton, the uh, left fielder. Hitting 232 and taking down, taking down low with Rios driving on the scene. I'm sure just about all the outfielders out there wondering. How much is going to cut into their playing time? You don't let $63 million sit on the bench. Now you take a look at it. Quinton's the one that has struggled hitting 232 with 11 home runs. I don't see it being die leaving the club with home runs of 24 hitting 272. Bob Sednick done a nice job for him in center field hitting 297. You mentioned 17 stolen bases. So. It looks like maybe Quentin might be the guy. French just misses with that delivery. Three and one. And full count. Of the 89 pitches that. Uh, he threw against the Rangers 61 with strikes. So that's a good omen. And that's not, however, as the breaking ball is low and inside. White Sox have the first base runner. Shortstop Alexi Ramirez will be the hitter. When we saw French. Pitching for the Tigers earlier. I don't remember him having a fastball as good as what we've yeah. seen since he's been here in Kansas City. And then what we're seeing tonight, I don't I don't remember his fastball being in the low 90s. And a change up uh, and a pretty good one, although it was up high. And that seemed to be part of his problem in his one start with the Mariners. Got, as we mentioned, those two two run home runs that he gave up. Just 23 years of age. And that fastball.
Well located inside after throwing a first pitch changeup comes in with a nice fastball in on the hands of Ramirez. French is a kid that used to dream about pitching for the Seattle Mariners as a kid in Colorado. Even though he was drafted by Detroit. And here he is. His dreams have come true. And a breaking ball that time hit foul. His favorite player, you know, and Griffey Jr. Fastball swung on, popped up. An easy play for Brennan and Bustles there to make the catch. Second inning history. A walk, but a runner left. We go to the bottom half of the second with Junior Beltry and Brennan do up no score. Now welcome back uh, to the roof covered St. Cole field tonight with a little rain outside. Ken Griffey Jr. will lead it off here in the second inning with no score against uh, Gavin Floyd. And he's keeping everything right at the knees. And a breaking ball that time. Fools you. It looked a breaking ball late. Mentioned he was throwing his fastball at the knees. That pitch started right above the knees and dove out of the strike zone. Tough to lay off of that pitch. The slider that time was a little bit high. In the way. One and two. Kenny finished the year with Chicago last year and helped them win the American League Central. They got the defending champions, had to play Minnesota Twins in a playoff game to knock the Twins out. And it changed that time a little high. Right on the border, isn't it? Yes, it is. Gavin Floyd's fastball is 91 to 93 miles an hour. It looks a lot harder than that because of his ability to throw changeups and breaking balls like that last one at 86. Mean 
Meanwhile, the Blue Jays have knocked off the Yankees after the Yankees swept the Boston Red Sox. Toronto's beaten them to 9 5 4. And Junior on the change is a strikeout victim. One down. And our banner bank note, our banner bank building to the future note, the future for this kid, Doug Fister, is tomorrow night as he makes his Mariner starting debut at Tacoma. Doug Fister, you can see six and four. And we will see him tomorrow night. Make his Major League starting debut. He worked one inning the other day. And there he is. I think he's uh, got a few butterflies tonight. I know he does. It's probably nice for him to be able to get that one inning out of the way, though. Uh, get out there and get a feel for it all. Stay in the middle of the diamond. Why isn't he keeping the chart tonight? Doing one. Nice change. Doing two. Adrian up. Five game hitting streak. Three for 11 against Gavin. And a slider swung on and popped up to left field. It's Clinton. So two down. Russell Brannion, the big Georgian with the opposite barrel grand salami. The one that uh, tore the game open in the sixth inning. Yesterday. His sixth career grand slam home run, but his first in a Half a dozen years. Nice change. Line inside. Take a look at the home run that he hit yesterday, the grand slam. This really impressive power to take a look at it. This pitch has hit the other way opposite field in the back of the bullpen. You just don't see that very often. And it didn't look like he had a you know the normal let it fly type of swing. It's almost like he just flipped that one out there and hit it in the back of the bullpen almost up on the stairwell. And a change up high. Side. And Floyd from Baltimore. Well, the White Sox have the shift on that we always see with Russell, but the second baseman Nix is playing just off the cut of the grass, and usually they're out a lot deeper in right field when they play the shift. And a change cut on, and it's missed. So Gavin strikes out two of the three men to face him here in this second inning. When we come back, we'll tell you about Jason Nix, Ramon Castro, and Scott Vicente. No score.
Well, those girls having a big time, a lot of fun here at the ballpark tonight. Time as we go to the third inning of play for our Aflac uh, trivia question. Interesting Aflac. question this evening. It's a who am I question. I played for three major league teams in 13 seasons. I also managed three major league teams. However, I'm best known for my association with the team that I never played for or managed. Who am I? Here's Jason Nix, the second baseman. All one, one ball and no strikes. Do you know the answer? No. I don't. One to count. A little bit low. And into it, one to you? No, I can't. Can't think of it. And a swing and a miss. Two and two. And as one might surmise when you play the White Sox, it usually has something to do with the team you're playing. So this has some kind of a tie. For the uh, Chicago White Sox. Maybe Al Lopez. And the breaking ball down low and inside. Ball three, three and two. And on Castro is next. Luke's fastball is hit on the ground. about Mike Hargrove. He played 13 seasons. What do you have to do with the White Sox? I don't know. I have no idea about the last part of it. I know he managed three teams, yeah. right? The Indians, the Orioles, and the Mariners. And that's high and outside. So, lead off base on balls. Hurricane flags are out right now, walking a leadoff man. It's his second walk. That French has given up. And Ramon Castro came over from the New York Mets. Is the hitter. See Fozzie's going to let him swing away. Play for a run early. Down low ball one. One ball on those strikes. Hitting only 136. Big pickoff to get pod segment right. back in the first, and the reason why is because now it's going to be more difficult for the rest of the runners to try to go. They're all going to be a little bit nervous about getting too far off of first base, so maybe just by that one pickoff move, they shut the running game down. They can, of course, still hit and run. A decent lead out there right now for Knicks. Just kind of like yesterday's game, the tenor of yesterday's game was changed by. That bullet hit by Pat Burrell yeah. in the first inning with the bases loaded, it turned out being a, a double play. Change. And after that, out of the strike zone. Boston wins. Uh, they beat the Detroit Tigers 6 to 5, so they do pick up a game on the Yankees. They, something they couldn't do. And they played them four games. And a foul back and out of play. So Boston back to within five and a half. Think that race is over? In the East? No, I don't think it's over. I mean, for me personally, I, I, I think the Yankees are going to win the East. What do you think? No, I don't think it's over at all. And a line drive right to Jack Wilson. is throw back to first. There's the old double play. Six three double play as Jason Nix is hung out to drive away from first base. Look how quickly Wilson gets rid of this 
no stride or anything, just flips it back across the diamond and gets nicks. That's a mistake on his part. Line drive to the left side, you have to freeze, and he took some hard steps towards second. And as quickly as Wilson was able to get rid of it, no chance to get back. Nice play. And here's Busebi. One on one. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay leading the Angels two to one. Tampa Bay one and ten at Angel Stadium since uh, 06. And a swing and a miss and a curveball. He's got a dandy. And that will be that. Second strikeout for Luke French. As we go to the bottom half of the third still, no score. Yes, that's what it, exactly what it was. <clears throat> yeah. And welcome back. And nice uh, half price family night crowd here tonight as we get set to move into the bottom half of the third. And Jack Wilson, who initiated the double play, takes the fastball from Gavin Floyd. High and away. Ball one. One ball and no strikes. And Joe Jamila follow. And then Michael Saunders. And that slider is a dandy. To get Floyd a very, very compact delivery. Two and one. Yeah, good pitch. For a tall man, you can see tall guys short arm the ball that often. That's kind of what it looks like, right? Yeah. Like Delivery looks like it's pretty easy to repeat. And for a short arm, it gets pretty good velocity on it, 92, 93 miles an hour. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if he can keep it down around the knees like that last pitch was, see why he's pitched so well lately. And a tapper back toward the mound, picked up by Floyd, is sort of first. And he got him. One down. Time to give you the answer now to our half-life trivia question. This man played three, four, three major league teams in 13 seasons. Managed three major league teams. He's best known for his association with a team that he never played for or managed. The old Roman himself, Charles Comiskey. Charles Comiskey, player manager for the Browns, played with the Chicago Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds as 
Kenji Jojima steps in and takes a breaking ball for a strike. He left the majors in 1894 to purchase a Western League team in Sioux Falls. And that check swing is a strike. Moved that team to Minneapolis and reached an agreement with the Cubs to move the team to Chicago for the 1900 season. And play began in the American League. 1900 with the, and they call themselves the Chicago White Stockings. And for some reason, when they lost the name Comiskey Park and Chicago South Side, I think they lost something. I know it's U.S. Cellular Field now, but it'll always be Comiskey Park to me. I, I called it Comiskey Park today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Not that. Kenji Jojima, a fly ball right at the left fielder. And Carlos Quentin takes care of that. Good question. Chuck Comiskey. Curtis will do that every now and then. Makes a good one in there. Yeah, yeah that was good. Puts a real effort into that one. Don't preen his feathers too much. <laughs> too high, the fastball. Came way off the fastball with that straight change. Oh, that's living at the kneecaps. Maybe a little bit out of the strike zone, as you can see. If you're consistently down there, though, you're eventually going to start getting those calls. And a ground ball to second base. Next will throw him out and perfect the first time through the lineup is Gavin Floyd. All nine in a row. We go to the fourth, the Mariners. White Sox, no score. It's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. Back here at Safeco Field, if you like a couple of pitchers who like to keep it moving and throwing strikes, you got the right ball game. Dave Sims with Mike Flowers, and these guys are dealing tonight. Well, they really are. You look at Floyd, he's perfect so far in French. Just one over the minimum. You really have to like the way French has gone about his business. Good fastball tonight, pitching inside, show a nice changeup too. Show a little bit of off speed early in counts, and jam that fastball in on the guy's hands. One of the issues coming into tonight's game, what's he's going to? What is he going to do with his first pitch? And you know, down in the zone, I heard you talking about it on the radio pregame show. As long as you keep it down, you got a chance. But yeah. the last time around in Kansas City, he, he elevated a few and got in trouble. This young man, Gordon Beckham, has been very impressive. Vying to become 
AL Rookie of the Year. The last time the Sox had one was Ozzie Guillen, their skipper, at 85. The center field. Ranging over is Gutierrez taking charge. Makes a catch. One down here in the top of the fourth that'll bring up Jermaine Dye. Jermaine Dye, 35 years old. Jim Tome, he turns 39 on August 27th. Alex Rios added to the ball club. Good chance he could be in the lineup for Wednesday's game when Mark Burley faces off against Felix Hernandez. Rios has to go. He was in New York, had to go to uh, Toronto, get his stuff. And he'll be on a plane tomorrow here to Seattle. Boy, that's a good breaking ball. 0 and 2. It's a good pitches. You talked about it. And so far, even in this at bat, nice pitch away from Dye. Then he comes right back inside for another strike. Further inside. Caught Rick Adair as he was coming back from the bullpen earlier today. And he said he like he really likes French's makeup. He says, you know, he's not gonna throw it so hard. He's 91, but he's got that first game out of, you know, under his belt. And now making a safe go debut and loves the arm action that his ability to be able to throw the arm action and with the and throw that change up effectively. You know the same arm speed. Right. And right. that's it, the key to throwing a change up. You have to keep your arm speed up just like your fastball. So you have to trust it and just let it go. You know that the grip that you have is the difference. And I think for him he gets a nice little movement down and away from the right handed hitters. The breaking ball right there. Sure was. It's been a little bit Below the strike zone. Angel Hernandez, the home plate umpire. Learned his slider from John Matlack. Good pitcher, good left hander with the Mets back in the early 70s. Works quickly, two and two. Jams JD, charging is Wilson. And he throws out Jermaine Dye. Two down here in the fourth. Defense loving the quick pace that Luke French has established. The Mariners' wives, their annual My Favorite Things basket auction is set for the Mariners Yankees game this Friday. Mariners wives have put together baskets of their husband's favorite things, including CDs, autographed, and game use items, and more. Baskets will be auctioned off via silent auction at Section 128. All proceeds benefit children of the nations. For tickets to Friday's Mariners Yankees game, visit Mariners.com. Like taking something out of the Oprah handbook. You've won a new car. Everybody in the audience has a new car. Happened to be watching during basketball season when she did that. That was unbelievable. I was on the road doing a basketball game, had to show him before we went to the arena. And it was, I guess, it was Christmas time. <laughs> she said, You're all getting a car. It's like people were having heart attacks in the, in the audience in Chicago. 1 1. It's homie. Goes the other way, but foul. Interesting development before the game today. Ken Williams, the uh, general manager of the White Sox, was crossing the street. I guess what on the first base side had uh, you know he's a GM. He had a cell phone to his to his hand, and I told me he strikes out, foul out. We'll finish it. We come back. But let's just say that the first few minutes with the GM of the White Sox here in Seattle, not good ones. No score.
couple of dueling pitchers here. Luke French for the Mariners and Gavin Floyd for the White Sox. No score. So Kenny Williams, the general manager of these White Sox, is getting out on the first base side of uh, Safeco Field, getting out of a cab. He's a GM. He's got the phone to his ear. He's getting out. He's walking across the street. Here's each one. And one of Seattle's finest, Seattle's finest, said, hey, come back here. So what do you mean? You tell me to come back here. You know who I am? He didn't say that, but that's what he was thinking. The guy in the cop came over to him, and they, hey, they're only watching for people's protection. It's busy in a Not that we salute them for their, for their great work. But he says, you know, you can't do that. What do you mean? I'm just walking into the ballpark. Here's a fine, fifty-six dollars jaywalking ticket. <laughs> One of Chicago writers said, "Here's what you do when you write the check: send it to 5601 because when you put the 01, it screws up the whole computer deal. You know, if it's fifty-six dollars, you throw it in one cent on there. <laughs> he said he's done that in Chicago. It screws up the whole works." Etro <laughs> punched out, but I'm told by other sources it doesn't work here. So the Seattle folks are pretty hip to it. Israel, a big dispute, and that's a that's a big rant for him. Did not like the call from Angel Hernandez. Where did the tracer? It was on the inside corner, borderline up. Nitro didn't like it. Tell you what, why don't you run across the street a couple of times tomorrow, and then you do the 5601. <laughs> see how that works for you. <laughs> I get here early enough that I don't have to worry about that. That's why I was talking to one of the reporters. He said, "What?" I told him what time I got here. He says, "Oh, they're not out there when you get right. there. That's why." Yeah. Keep doing a good job, boys. Okay, he said, "You know, back in Chicago, where I come from, police are out there fighting crime, not giving jaywalking tickets." But J Kenny said, "Hey, this will give me more cred, more street cred with the GMs in baseball." <laughs> one in one at duty. I thought he was kidding at first, but he, you know, down in the, in the uh, dugout before the game. I thought Kenny was kidding, but it was a true story. Evan Floyd has struck out three. Boy, he has got all of his arsenal working tonight, two and two. He's retired the first 10 that he's seen so far. White Sox off a six and four homestand. Took three out of four from the Yankees, two out of three from the Angels. And lost two out of three to Cleveland. Full count on deck, Jose Lopez. When the White Sox were going over the Mariners, no doubt they talked about Gutierrez, and he's the hot hitter. See if he gets a fastball here. He did a great ball, but it took some off of it. It's like a look like a BP fastball. Take a look at the home run from Gutierrez in yesterday's ball game. Two days in a row, he homered. Saturday, three hits and a home run in the same yesterday. Searing line drive yesterday. Up high. There goes the perfecto. Take a look at our U.S. Marine Corps leaders of the game, Jose Lopez. How about this? 284 runs batted in since 06. Second among all American League second baseman Robinson Cano of the Yankees with 298. Yankees will be in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yankees off a four game sweep of Boston, lose at home tonight to Toronto 5 4. Mariners, there's a drive down the line. Uh, foul. Lopez bidding for the Mariners' first run. Gutierrez is the first base runner. Lopez grounded out the third his first time up. Gavin Floyd, 6'5, 230, 26 years old, out of Annapolis. Maryland, the 0 1. There's a drive down the left field line again. That one's going to hook foul. 
Right, gets a first pitch fastball inside, pulls a foul on that, an off-speed pitch out over the plate. Stay back just a little bit longer. Floyd said, here comes the 0-2. Floyd's been throwing some really good ball of late. His last five starts, three and oh, two no decisions, a two six seven ERA. And he's going against Lopez, who's been really good of late. Three for five yesterday. Seventeen three hit games. Here's what Gavin Floyd has done since the 22nd of May. Impressive, impressive. Seven and two with a two two four. Well, it's a buck ninety one. Against him, the good strikeout walk ratio. Gutierrez gets back. He's seven out of twelve in base stealing. One and two. Lopez able to hold up. Count even to two and two. Each year leads the ball club with 23 stolen bases. Gutierrez third on the club. Here's a 2 2. White Sox took two out of three for the Mariners back in late April. In that one game, we had to double up. Bartolo Colon. I hope they you know, that youngster, the weak the little guy paying attention with these foul balls ringing around here. Two and two. Lopez Tomahawks one. Deep left field. Going back. It's off the fence. Gutierrez coming to third. He'll get in there. And Lopez is in with the double. Second and third. Mariners in business. One out here in the fourth. Really nice hit bat by Lopez fouled off a number of pitches really made Floyd work and then he gets a mistake up middle of the plate and hits it hard right in the middle of the fence out in left field thought he had a chance to hit it out of here to see at the top of the strike zone but a nice at bat for Lopez 28th double team leader chance for junior now to get the first runs on the board here White Sox will play their infield back so they'll give up a run here for an out. Junior had a lot of laughs catching up with the White Sox who he played with last year for 41 games at 260. Three home runs and 18 runs batted in. They will hold up. Junior struck out on a 2 2 pitch his first time up. That was in the second inning. Florida struck out three, walked one. First hit he's given up. A 1 0. That should be enough. It will be a little loop for Gapper. Coming around Lopez being waved around. It'll be no throw. Ken Griffey Jr. comes up with a two run single. Mariners have a 2 0 lead. Junior gets a fastball in on his hands. Nice read by Lopez. He takes off right away as Junior fights his ball off into right center field. Lopez knows that Podsednik, the center fielder, was not going to get there. So he's able to score from second base without a throw to the plate. Two ribbies for Junior. Gives him 37 on the season. Big swing in the midst at a breaking ball by Beltre. Strike one. Adrian flied out the left his first time. So the Mariners break on top. They get two runs. Here in the fourth, couple of hits. Kevin Floyd was perfect through the first nine hitters that he faced. 
0 and 2 to Beltran. Two strikes. Who would have thought that here on August 10th he'd be talking about the Mariners four and a half back in a wild card chase with a record of 58 and 53 coming off of last year. Not too shabby. One and two. Bouncing ball could be tough. Everybody safe. Adrian Beltre with an infield hit. That's three consecutive base hits off of Gavin Floyd. And it's a nice setup for Russell Brennan. Floyd was cruising along. He ended up walking. Goodyear is on a 3-2 pitch. And now it's three consecutive hits. You see that ball bounce off the plate. Think of Beck, maybe if he comes up with it, he's not going to be able to throw out Beltre. Don Cooper out for conversation with his starter. How quickly things change. He was just cruising along. And a 3 2 pitch to Franklin Gutierrez, the hot hitter for the Mariners, have walked him on it. And three consecutive hits after that, after he was perfect. How about Russell Brennan yesterday? First pitch, bases loaded, sixth inning. Against, against Jeff Bennett, there was no doubt about it. There was a great explosion of noise here in the ballpark. 28,000 plus on hand. Mariners lead it 2-0 here in the busy fourth. One out, two on. Backhand by Ramon Castro. Randy in the sixth hitter coming to the plate here in the fourth inning. Angel Hernandez, the umpire. One and one. Brandon 0 for 4 against Gavin Floyd. Both closed today. No problem here. One of the beauties of the ballpark. The 1 1 here to Brandon. One and two. There you go. Mariners making them work a little bit. 26 pitches already here in the fourth inning. Just one out. Got his attention. Two and two. Above the average, the OPS. If he's at second, Beltre at first. Gavin Floyd in his third year with the White Sox, coming over from the Phillies back in December of 06. Mariners just took two out of three from the defending American League champions and now tonight the first of three against the defending Central Division champions in the American League. The White Sox who were engaged in one heck of a battle with Detroit starting the day three behind the Tigers. Tigers lost at Boston 6-5 the pitch. Mile high. Didn't miss the roof by a heck of a lot. Kernerko is under it, makes the catch.
That's the second out here in the fourth. Here's a look at the Central Division. Chicago with that Detroit loss picks up a half a game. Minnesota five back three under 500. Cleveland and Kansas City supporting everybody else. Ozzy again can't get a speeding ticket without driving in terms of uh, regarding what he said. So he told me before the on the radio pregame show talking about hey if his guys get hit hey, he's coming after people. And I said well how does that set with Major League Baseball. Can't get a speeding ticket without driving. It works for me. I like it. <laughs> well I, I think the main thing is, is it's really. You know if if his guys have had enough. They have a chance to fix it themselves mm -hmm. or is more of the guys that are. Pitching for him right without him having to say anything can oh, take absolutely. care of it too. Yeah you bet. See, there's only one time. He told his pitchers to go get somebody. So Vicente Padilla shocking. And Alexi Ramirez twice in the game. Yeah. Get somebody. He got Blaylock next time up. That ended it right there. But he said, you know, I can I gotta defend my guys. Uh, the Don Wakamatsu about it. He played with Ozzy in Chicago and he said, listen, the Mariners are going to continue to pitch aggressive. Don't anticipate any problems. Jack Wilson, two and one. I, I just think that the players can police themselves out there, take care of their own business. That's the one edge the NL does have over the American League. Though. Pitcher has to take that yeah, bat. Buddy. There. Yeah, yeah. Pitcher has to go hey, ahead. You're such a bad guy. All right, son, take a bat. I got something for you. Meanwhile, if you're an American League guy, you want to strangle your own pitcher. You know, if he puts you in a situation. Two and two to Wilson. Well, and, and you have to rely on your pitcher to protect your guys. Absolutely. You know, you can't, you can't just go after the pitcher, as you said, because he he's not going to have a helmet and a bat in his hands. Wilson, the seventh man to bat here in the fourth inning, trying to keep this thing going. Two nothing. Mariners have broken up a three inning perfect effort by Gavin Floyd. A punch shot, and it goes right to Jason Nix. That'll do it, but they break up the perfecto with a walk, a double, a two run single, and an infield hit. Mariners have a two nothing lead. Seattle Mariners baseball on FSN is brought to you by Sterling Savings Bank. Now more than ever. And by Les Schwab celebrating over 50 years of pride and performance. Glad you could join us on this dreary looking Monday here in Seattle. But the roof is closed. We're playing baseball. Yes, sir. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, the FSN crew. You guys going old school Mariners on us here. Yeah, good looking hat. Mariners just taking a 2 nothing lead. In Griffey Jr. with a base hit to right. Brings in two. Here's Paul Canerco. To lead it off against Luke French. Canerco 
Chicago, another good year. 284, 21 bombs, 70 runs batted in. He was one of the guys that was hit Saturday night against Cleveland. What was really set off Ozzie Guillen. You gotta be kidding me. Paulie says Paulie's my five hitter and he's got bruises all over his body. He's really he's not the Ozzie's just not real pleased with the Cleveland ball club. More than anybody, because they've been had a propensity to hit White Sox hitters. Going back is Brennan. Can't get it. Good effort. I like his comment about if you don't know how to pitch inside, don't do it. Fair enough. You know, he's talking about uh, it is an art form. Yeah, well, it's, it's you have to do it if you want to be successful at this level, but you have to know what you're doing and how and how to pitch in there. As he led the White Sox to the 05 World Championship first Chicago White Sox title since 18 19 swing and a miss and Kernuka, that's a big out. Nice job by Luke French. That's his fourth strikeout. He's walked two. Good looking breaking ball throws it right underneath the hands of Canerco. You see Kenji set up inside and he'll swing right over the top of it. Nice pitch, well located pitch. First time Luke French is working with Kenji Jojima's first start last week in Kansas City. Rob Johnson did the catcher. Here's Carlos Quinton. Walked his first time up. Broken bat off the glove of Beltran. That'll be a base hit. And Quentin got it out of the box. Here's the play at second, not in time. So Quentin, a broken bat off the glove of Beltran. Two base hit with one out here in the fifth. Now here's where we get spoiled. We see Adrian Beltran make this play all the time. It goes right off the end of his glove. He's not happy about it, but because he slowed it down, it ended up being an easy double for Quentin. They had to chase it down up against the fence. Down the left field line, take another look at it. Not an easy play, that's for sure, but Adrian certainly he expects himself to make every play. He feels like if he gets to it, he should make the play, but that's not an easy one right there. So the tenth a double for Carlos Quentin ends a run of ten consecutive hitters retired by Luke French. See Adrian miss a ball in infield practice. He takes it out of his glove and slams it down hard. Must not be his game club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. <laughs> the guys have their the glove they use in the games every day, and then they usually have two or three other ones that they play catch with and take their grounders or their fly balls in the outfield. Change up hit to right field. Itro has to back up a little bit. He's setting up for a throw. No tag. Boy, there's looking at throw. Hey, he read the scouting report, did Carlos Quentin. Don't run on that arm. Ichiro with three assists this year. Yeah, Ozzie was a good player during his time as well. And rarely a dull moment with the White Sox. They share Chicago with the Cubs. The Cubs more fabled of the two teams. Certainly, they. I don't. I don't know what the following numbers. I mean, in terms of audience, who has you know what the market share is, but certainly the Cubs seem to get, from our perspective, and I guess from Ozzy's perspective, because you always hear how he hates the Cubs, that they get most of the bang for the buck in Chicago. He and Lou get along for the most part, as far as I know. Two awfully big personalities. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. They, they, well, like you said, though, they seem to coexist just yep. fine. No issues there. Two down here in the fifth. Luke French in his safe co field debut. And Griffey Jr. is giving him a 2 nothing lead. Junior big two run single in the fourth. French in some trouble now. Two outs, runner at second, 3 0 to Jason Nix.
four pitch walk. The eight hole hitting second baseman Nix and now two aboard first and second. Two down here in the fifth for Ramon Castro. Lined into a double play back in the third. Luke French's third walk. Second time he's issued a free pass to Nix. Seems to have lost a little bit here. It's five straight balls he's thrown. And Rick Adair will go out and talk to him about it. See if he can get him back in the line. Talking to Rick about Ian Snell. A couple things they want they're looking to work with on him to get him back. He's gonna Ian Snell will open up the Yankee series Thursday. So he's got the stuff clearly he's got 700 innings under his belt. Anxiety factor a little bit high and he also. A couple of things athletically so he's a very good athlete he wants him to look and Maybe get a little more athleticism in his approach. But Ian's looking forward to getting out there against the Yankees starting on Thursday night. Back one and one. Ball club just gave him a two nothing lead. He's trying not to give it back. One one. Coming up Wednesday, Mark Burley against Felix Hernandez. And both of those, and Burley, send them home early, Burley. He likes to throw quickly, and Felix Hernandez, if he can get on his rhythm again. We might be able to make post game plans might get a reasonable hour. It'd be a great matchup to watch those two go at it. Ball of two strikes. To the gap. Trouble. A lot of people running around the bases. Quentin scores. Nix is coming around and France is giving back the two nothing lead. It's a two two ball game. Ramon Castro the nine hole hitting catcher. Two run double to right center field. Now he gets a pitch out over the plate. See Kenji set up away. Bell tie. That ball pretty hard too to split the gap out there between Gutierrez and Ichiro. You have to hit it on the nose. He certainly did that. Just like that it's 2-2. Two -two. Here's Besedic. Strike one to Scott is single is picked off in the first struck out on a one two pitch in the third. So the bottom of the order has done a number on friendship. Pointing out of the six hole with a double off of Beltre's glove and glove and then with two outs a walk. And Castro, who came in hitting a buck 36, this ball going down to Beltre. He'll throw across, inning over, but we got a tie ball game. So we head to the home fifth here at Safeco. Both teams, two runs on, three hits, and Castro came up big here in the fifth for Chicago.
Mariners Baseball on FSN, presented by Wilcox Farms, celebrating Wilcox Farms' 100th anniversary. Remember, buy local, buy fresh, buy Wilcox Farms eggs. By Taco Del Mar, home of the 499 Mondo Burrito. And by Widmer, Ordinary Brothers, Extraordinary Beer. Locked up again at 2-2 as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Mike Flowers, the FSN crew. Going to be Kendu Jojima, Michael Saunders, and Ichiro against Gavin Floyd. Kenji lined out to left his first time up. Ken Griffey Jr. in the fourth, a two run single. Ramon Castro answers in the top of the fifth with a two run double. Swing and a miss. We were mentioning earlier, Maris made just one trip to the great city of Chicago. Lost two out of three. Lost 2 1 and 6 3, and one behind Felix Hernandez 9 to 1. Kenji's gone. The 2 1 game was the game that Jack Abouskis threw so well, right? Yeah, great game, win 8. Yeah, fabulous game. Felix was just utterly dominant in the game he threw. Four strikeouts now for Floyd. There's Michael Saunders. He grounded out to second his first time up. Some, at some point, this young man's going to get his first big league homer. He has made a lot of good progress the last week, 10 days. Certainly has the frame for it. Some of the line drives that we've seen him hit lately, the more aggressive swing from Saunders, ball jumps off his bat, six foot four. You would think that he's going to hit some home runs. Had 13 in Tacoma, a little over 60 games. Floyd very poised tonight. Retired the first nine men that he faced. Didn't give up a hit till the fourth inning. Two and one. Saunders an 11th round pick back in June of 04. Pulls this one foul. Two and two. Saunders, young man from Victoria, British Columbia, has worked a 3 2 count. One out, each row on deck. Three two. Up high, draws a walk. Well, with that in mind, with each row coming up having, after having struck out looking, he'll be a little hacked off. Do a little rally fries here. Here's Lindsay. I like the bobblehead theme again. Guys, there, there you go. I like the <laughs> the one bobblehead got turned upside down, but I still liked it. And after the White Sox just tied the score, why not? See if we can get the guys to score some runs. <laughs> Prosser in Eastern Washington. Glad to have you folks on board. I see the family out here. So Ichiro really gets caught looking. He's over two. He gets caught looking back in the fourth. Fly it out to right. Lead off the Mariners home first. After you got punched out on that borderline, which you thought was a borderline pitch, how did what was your your mental approach going up next to AEB? I, I, you usually put it away. I mean, you certainly can visualize the pitch that they struck you out on. You're going to have to. Pay attention to it, but he wouldn't swing at that pitch early in the count. But when he gets two strikes, if there's something that's up and in, he'll probably take a hack at it. And that's usually what happens. You were talking about him standing there for a little bit. I guarantee you he replayed that pitch two or three times in his mind and then had a few words for Angel Hernandez, who's the home plate umpire. 
but the players that they can they can do that quickly. And I don't know if it was because the pitch was up or maybe he thought it was in. It was borderline both ways. Runner goes. Saunders stolen base. His first in the major leagues. He stole that base easy. We talked about his speed for a big man. He can really run and he steals this base with no problem. He was in high gear after about a step and a half. Good stuff. Lead run at second base. RBI waiting for Ichiro, sitting on 31 on the season. Two balls, two strikes to Ichiro, one out runner at second. A scramble down in the White Sox bullpen. Randy Williams, number 67, and Tony Pena. Is number 57, the right hand. Each round now four for 13 against Gavin Floyd. Michael Saunders takes a lead. Sednik does not have a strong arm in center field. Dye's got a good one in right, and Quentin's not batting left. See on that last pitch, Floyd, after he gets the second strike, tried to come back inside again, but missed. One out. Saunders at second. Big pitch here, three and two to each row. Back up the middle, base hit. Saunders got a super jump, being waved around. Here's the play. The play is cut off. Each row's a dead duck at first, but he gives the Mariners a 3 2 lead. Saunders was flying. There's no way they were going to get him. Well, you just mentioned it, Potsdam. Not a strong arm. Solid base hit up the middle. Great jump by Saunders. He is a good-looking athlete. And then how about Canerco and the second baseman Nick sneaking in behind Ichiro to get him? Well, he's got a great gait, doesn't he? Yeah, losing his belt. Up the bat. All right, when he dove yeah, in the second, in, yeah, yeah. he broke it. Here's Goody. Breaking ball for strike. We throw out 8 3 4 for the second out, but picks up an RBI. Retro is 32nd RBI. I guess the Mariners a 3 2 lead. Continues his hot hitting streak. Goody's now seven for his last 11. Coors Light Freeze Camp brings you Mr. Gutierrez. Good extension. And Alexi Ramirez, young shortstop who we like, he's good. Took a Probably wouldn't have, might not have gotten him anyway. Base hit, it's a Coors Light freeze cam. Two out runner on. Good shortstops in this American League. This kid, Andrus. Some athletic shortstops, guys, got to really move. High bar does a nice job with the Angels. So Gavin Floyd's next pitch will get him into triple digits. This for a guy who's retired the first nine men that he faced. Make that for the first ten men that he faced. And you can see he was in good shape with his pitch count. Now last inning where he threw 34 pitches and now in this inning over 20. Don Cooper out for another conversation. Whoever's playing the music here at Safeco Field is doing a great job. They're playing Patsy Klein's I Fall to Pieces. Yesterday they played, somebody walked yesterday, they played I'm Walking by Fats Domino. Played some Elvis earlier. College of Musical Knowledge. Thank you, Kate Kaiser. 
Floyd, four and two thirds his numbers. Put something on here. Yeah, two I was going to do anything. Yeah, he's he, let him steal it. Why not? You saw the way that Saunders just stole second base. He stole it easily. Keeps coming inside. Lumpy keeps hooking him foul. That's a, the third one tonight, I believe, if not more. Yeah, his last at bat. Similar pitch, fastball in on his hands. He pulled it foul. Then he tried to go with something off speed. Pulled that pitch foul and eventually ended up hitting a double off the fence for fouling off a number of pitches. Goes the other way this time. That's going to get fouled. Good turnaround. Second time through for the ball club. Ball and two strikes. Pulls this one down to the third baseman Beckham. Gets the force to Nix. Mariners are gone, but Ichiro comes up big with an RBI, scoring young Michael Saunders, who helped the cause with a walk and a stolen base. Scored easily. It's 3 2 Mariners. Good ball game here at Safeco tonight with the White Sox in town. First of three. Mariners lead at 3 2. We take a look at the Mariner calendar. Brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Home stand continues. Two more with the White Sox and then the Yankees come to town for four games. You don't have tickets yet. Better hurry. Yankees lost tonight to Toronto. By a run 5 4. Luke French giving the lead again. Gordon Beckham, Jermaine Dye, and Jim Tomei, 2 3 4 here for Chicago in the sixth inning. French tonight has struck out four, walked three. The last walk came in and scored on the two run double by Ramon Castro in the fifth. A four pitch walk, lead off the sixth. Dangerous Jermaine die. Comes Rick Adair again. Don Wakamatsu, you see the bullpen scrambling, getting somebody up out there as Rick Adair goes out to the mound to talk to French. This was all four of those pitches. None were close. No, he's walked a batter in the last four innings now. He's at least one walk, just the one walk, but. 
Scott Marina telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Jermaine dies grounded out to third, grounded out to short. One good hitter here, Jermaine Dye. Ball one. Oh, it is all over the place. Two and oh. He's trying to throw everything. He started him with a breaking ball, came back with a change up after missing with some fastballs to Beckham. Main died 276 career hitter. Oh boy, three and oh. Ooh. Hadn't thrown a strike this inning. Fifth walk. Constant challenge and hope from uh, all managers, not just Don Wakamatsu, but everybody. Get us deep into a ball game. Now you got yourself in a situation where you've got the 13th leading home run hitter in the history of the game up two on, nobody out, Jim Tomey. Strike one. Kenji was. On that. Yeah, crossed him up. Don Wakamatsu just to not have everybody ready this early in his bullpen. Sean White's up and throwing. The old one to Tomei. Tough spot here for the kid. Tommy's in elite company in some of the great categories in Major League Baseball history. Oh, two. Got him looking. That's a big punch out. Wow, in the sixth inning, one down. He started him with a breaking ball, came back with a fastball away, and then he drops this 0 2 breaking ball on him. Not much argument from Tommy. Right at the top of the strike zone. Second time Tommy's gone down on strikes. Five strikeouts for French. Still not out of the woods by any stretch. Here's Kernerko. Yanked foul. Got a good one here in Kernerko. His 70 runs batted in. He's already surpassed last year's total of 62. And he's hit 20 home runs for the 10th time in his career. Big part of that 05 World Championship team that swept Houston. The 01. Similar pitch. He struck him out on 1 2 back in the fifth. Play would do French really good here. One and one bounce foul. And we get ahead of Canerco with a couple of off speed pitches. Seems to have better command of his breaking ball right now than his fastball. Crowd would love a strikeout. 
Prince not that particular out of any kind he'll take it. But one two. Two balls and two strikes Ryan Roland Smith. Fine performance by him yesterday in six and two thirds for 109 pitches. Six hits he did walk four struck out six. Branch is set the 2 2 to Konerko. Breaking ball popped up. Brandon watches it get out of play. One double play so far tonight. Ramon Castro hit a bullet to Jack Wilson and threw across to Jason Nix to double him up. That ended the third. Go two and two. So now full count to Kernerko. Mariners up three two. They got one out. Beckham, he's at second. Jermaine Dye is at first. Both reach via the walk. Big spot here in his new home for Luke French, the pitch. Bases are loaded. He's walked them loaded. That's the sixth walk against five strikeouts. And Don Wakamatsu may not show it, but I'm sure inside has reached his own boiling point. 3 2 Mariners. Bases loaded, one out here in the sixth. Seattle Mariners baseball on FSN is presented by Money Tree. And Money Tree providing immediate cash for your business is our business. Apply for business loan at MoneyTreeInc.com. And by Banner Bank, better ideas, better banking. The Mariners have a 3-2 lead, and boy, are they in a pickle right now? One out, bases loaded. Game summary, pick it up, fourth inning. Mr. Griffey, George Kenneth Griffey Jr. Base hit scores two. Mariners take a two nothing lead. In the fifth inning, it's given right back. The nine hole hitting catcher, Ramon Castro, starting today hitting a buck 36, drives in two with a double. Scores tied at 2 2. Then in the fifth, Ichiro comes through. Base hit up the middle. Michael Saunders, who had walked and stole second, he scores. They get Ichiro. Took the generous turn, but each row gets the job done with the RBI's 32nd. Mariners have a 3 2 lead. So now they ask Sean White to come in for a double play ground ball to end this inning. See what happens. Tough hitter in Carlos Quentin. Oh, one for one. Run scored. He's also walked. A 
the Sox. One down here in sixth. Actually, a pretty good pitcher in this situation. If he can get put in the swing at one of those two seam fastballs, he can throw through. He might be able to get a ground ball and get out of the inning with a double play. The 2 1. Came in tight. Now it's a 3 1. Carlos Quentin about to turn up his own personal voltage meter right now. Three and one with the bases loaded, one out. A lot of trouble. Beckham scores, dies right behind him. A two run double by Carlos Quinton on a three one pitch that he just hammered. Four three White Sox. Take a look at Quinton in the swing. Three and one count. Catches that fastball down and in, catches it right out in front of the plate and hits a rope into the corner. This is a tough club to pitch from behind. First ball put in play this inning. Walk, walk, strikeout, walk. Two run single. And for Carlos Quentin, two for two, two runs batted in, a run scored, two doubles, and he's walked once. Yikes. Mirrors fouls one off. Two in, two on. With one out. One two to Ramirez is over two this evening. Two RBIs for Quentin gets his total to 29. Swing and a miss. Ramirez is gone for the second out. For a couple of sinkers in on his hands, he goes with a slider away. Mira just waves at it. Nice pitch. Location from White in the outside corner. There have been six walks tonight, all by French, and three of them have scored. Familiar theme from a couple of days ago 10 walks, six scored. That was on Saturday. Jason Nix has walked twice and scored a run. 2 0. Oh, a lot of scoring since the bottom of the fourth. Broken bat dribbler, Beltre. Goes across and that'll do it. The White Sox back on top. It's 4 3 Chicago as we hit to the home six. Coming up, Junior Beltre and Brandon.
Four three White Sox in the first of three here at Safeco Field. Ichiro Jr. and the Mariners, they welcome Derek Jeter and the New York Yankees to Safeco Field for a four game series beginning this Thursday. Good seats still available, but you know what? They're going fast. So get your tickets. Mariners Yankees series at Mariners.com. Mariners jump down on front as we give you a good look from behind home plate. Good seats. Ken Griffey Jr. leading it off. Strike one. Jr. came up big in the fourth. 1 0 pitch. I think it's something off the trademark. And to right center field, it scored two, gave the Mariners the lead. White Sox came back with two in the top of the fifth. Mariners answered with one in the home fifth, and then the White Sox regained the lead in the sixth. Junior finds a hole, base hit. Two for, two, two for three night. Good to see him swing the bat well. Adrian Beltre is up next. A smoother, quieter, greener way to travel. Right Sound Transit's late, late rail from Tuck Willett to Seattle with 10 stops along the way. Beltre one for two, got an infield hit his last time up. Luke French with six walks. Ryan Roland Smith with four yesterday. Ian Snell walked six on Saturday. Boy, the walk rate, it's just getting out of hand. Six for Felix Hernandez on Friday night. Vargas on Thursday walked three. That's unbelievable. Look at these numbers. Well, especially when you consider that the pitching has been the strength of this club all year, and we haven't seen that at all. Most of the time, the guys are pitching ahead in the count for whatever reason. They've just struggled with that over the last week and a half. It wasn't like they weren't having their problems when we were in Kansas City either. Right. Well, and, and some of those, cases, those numbers I just ran down, you yeah. include that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Two and one. Down to the third baseman Beckham was the next for one. They turn it five, four, three around the horn. That was a really nice turn by Nix. The throw from Beckham a little bit off. He had to reach for it, but he gets rid of it quickly. Take another look at it. Just a two hopper over to Beckham, throws it. Throws a little sinker over. He actually picked it out of the dirt, but he gets rid of it quickly with a strong throw. Nice turn. Beckham, Nixon, Kernerko. Double play firm. They turn two here in the sixth. Here's Brandon. Just double play turned by Chicago this evening. Oh, and two to Russell. Brandon with a 66 RBI, tied with Lopez for the team lead. There's a drive. That is not coming back. Goodness gracious. Off the mezzanine level, the score is tied at 4 4. Home run for Russell Brandon. His 27th RBI number 67. Boy just kept pounding him inside. Russell swung through a pitch, foul to pitch off. Tried to go back in there again for a third time. See Castro set up in there, and that pitch left it out over the plate. Only the mezzanine Vegas sign kept it from reaching the railroad tracks. This track's beyond right field. Boy, that ball got hammered. 423 feet and I don't know what the time was on that but it got the Vegas the Vegas sign very quickly. Shouldn't that be like the old max start 
Stark uh, hit hit sign win suit back at <laughs> back at uh, Brooklyn's Ebbets Field. That's a four second trip to Vegas. That should be worth something to wrestle for. <laughs> Not like everybody's coming out here and hacking at that sign every day. Come on. No, I agree. We got to that sign in a hurry, four seconds. There's a strike to Jack Wilson. Certainly gave a charge to the 21,049 on hand here on a Monday night here at Safeco Field. Jack Wilson. Walks in the 3-1 pitch. Lead runs aboard. Floyd's third walk. Joey Cora, bench coach. He wants Ramon Castro. And Ramon's going to take a slow walk out to talk to Floyd so they can get some more work out in the bullpen. Angel Hernandez, not his first rodeo. He's following right behind him. Thursday catch the Mariners and the Bronx Bombers in action when they open a big four game series. It's also Mariner Moose T-shirt night for all kids 14 and under. Thanks to Bing tickets. They're going fast. Reserve your seat right now. Mariners.com. Comes Ozzie Ginn. He's going to make a change. Once a right hander. Kenji Judgment is going to be the hitter. Tony Pena is his guy. 4-4 ball game. Entertaining ball game here in the six. Back and forth we go. It's 4-4. White Sox and the Mariners first of three. Take a look at some scoreboard action here. Washington's lottery bringing it to you. Colorado 11-5. How about Troy Tulowitzki going five for five, knocked in seven, hit for the cycle. Pretty good day. Cool. That is remarkable. And he also, Tulowitzki has an unassisted triple play, not tonight, but in his in his credentials, so he becomes the third player in history is hit for the cycle and turned an unassisted triple play guy named George Burns and you remember John Valentin. Yes, he did. Take a look at our quest high speed pitch numbers for the starters both departed Floyd at 94 French at 91. New pitchers Tony Payne. Two outs, Kenji Jojima. There's a slide for strike. It's a big high leg kick from Payne right there. If Wilson wants to take off, probably have a pretty good chance of stealing this base if he continues with that leg kick. A little bit of a pause at the top of it. There he goes. He saw it. Throw by Kestro. Not in time. Stolen base, Jack Wilson. First as a Mariner. Saw the exact same thing you did. If he didn't, I'm sure he took one look at Lee Tinsley over first, and Lee gave him the old go ahead. Take a look at it. 
pretty big leg kick. If I know Tins, he was laughing when he saw that time to the plate. Kenji jokes one. Deep left field. Mariners have the lead right back. Wow. Kenji's 13th home run. So Kenji goes deep. Home run number four gives him 14 ribbies on the season. Mike got it in the Kenji sweet spot. They made really? metal in and when he can kill that pitch. Take a look at where Castro sets up. Middle of the plate. That's exactly where he threw it. Kenji hits it out to the back of the bullpen for a two run homer. Boy, he unloaded, didn't he? Two long balls here in the sixth inning for the Mariners back on top 6 4. Michael Saunders, the hitter. Three hundred ninety four feet. You can tell what that crack. That's a sweet sound when it's on your ball club. Mariners after the double play ball from Beltre. Not much happening. Brandy hits a homer, a walk, and then another home run. Center field. But Setnik gave ground. Comes in and that will do it. But plenty of fireworks in the sixth. The solo home run by Brandon. 423 feet. And then Kenji lasers one out of here as well. Six four Mariners. Welcome back to Mariners Baseball on FSN. The Tracer is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Well, yeah, both offenses have really come to life here at Safeco Field. Russell Brennan with a mammoth home run on an 0-2 pitch with two outs in the sixth. A walk later, Kenji Jojma unloads, two-run homer. That's his fourth home run for Brennan, his 27th, and the Mariners back on top again, 6-4. Now Sean White is the pitcher of record for the Mariners. Ramon Castro to lead it off here in the seventh. Castro with a big two run double in the fifth. And tied to score 2 2. There was nothing cheap about either one of the home runs the Mariners just hit. Don't remember those. Brandon's knocking down signs and Kenji throws one in the back of the pen. He almost put one in the stairwell. Well hit just out of the reach of Jack Wilson base hit. Good effort. Solid line drive by Castro hooks away just enough to where Jack can't get to it. Nice effort though. Top the order, Scott Sednik, one for three. Scotty led off with a base hit to center and then was picked off 
great pickoff by Mariner starter Luke French. French now off the hook. Ball one to Pitsednik. Gordon Beckham's on deck. Scott Linebrink up throwing in the Chicago bullpen. Former Padre. I believe we saw him. Where did we see him? In San Diego or did we see him in Chicago? I know we've seen him this year. We saw him in Chicago. Yep. Chance for two. There's one. Wilson. Chow. Quick two down here in the seventh. Hey fans, don't miss all the new episode, a new all, a new episode of Seahawks All Access later on tonight here in FSN. Going to go one on one with a major addition to the Hawks receiving core, the one the only T.J. Hushman's out of plus. We're going to get a look at the other wideouts joining Hush this season in the Seattle Recharge Aerial Attack Seahawks All Access tonight at 10:30 right here in FSN. Two and zero to Gordon Beckham. Mariners have turned two double play. Chicago one. Jermaine Dye, nice job there. Solid base hit. Gordon Beckham. Talked about Beckham swinging the bat well for a rookie young man. Nice solid base hit back up the middle. Beckham one for three, a walk and a run scored. There's Jermaine Dye. Two grand outs, a walk, and run scored. Swing and a miss. Nice two seam fastball for White down in the zone. Two run lead for the Mariners. Six runs, eight hits, no errors. 4 6 and 0 for Chicago. Line break. 71 and 37 is Matt Thornton. White's ready. One and two to die. Main die has been White Sox for a while. Came up with Atlanta, has been Kansas City, been an open. A one two center field. That'll stay in the ballpark. But Frazier learned to like. Goody's got it. End of inning over. As Sean White strands a runner. Mariners will take that two run advantage to the middle of the seventh inning with the top of the order coming up.
Seattle Mariners baseball on FSN is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino. Welcoming country's own Clint Black, August 22nd. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. Offenses have really taken over this ball game. 6-4. Mariners home runs tonight for the Mariners by Russell Brandon and Kenji Joji. McKenji, by the way, homered for the first time since May 25th at Oakland. Veteran Scott Linebrink is in the ball game now. He is the third pitcher for Ozzie Gian's White Sox. He's having a nice year. 38 strikeouts, 39 innings pitched, ERA 3-2. Adriel came up large in the fifth. RBI single. They gave the Mariners a 3 2 lead. They gave it back in the sixth, but took it back again in the bottom of the sixth. Adriel, first pitch. Break behind. 2 0. Itro Gutierrez and Lopez coming up. Itro looked like he was trying to hit one up mm -hmm. there in the cafe with that swing. <laughs> Spun himself all the way around on the 2 0 pitch. Two and two. Two and two. Struck him out. Good heater, well placed by Scott Weinbrick. He throws struck out. Struck out for the second time. Well, he didn't mess around. He went right after him, throwing a bunch of fastballs, and that last one, good movement on that last one, ran away from each row, up and out over the plate. Franklin Gutierrez. One for two, a walk, a run scored. Took the line off of that one. Yeah, dropped the slider in there. One to Goody inside. Hey, what? He's coming in pump gas or not? Gutierrez has had an outstanding year for the Mariners. Hit that off the end of the bat. Charging is Beckham. He throws him out two outs. Catch a special coaches edition of Mariners All Access tomorrow on FSN. The coaching staff touches on their off field hobbies and places they've been and how they ended up joining Don Wakamatsu here in Seattle. That and much more tomorrow at 6 on Mariners All Access. Lopez looks to strike. Priest is team leading double tally to 28 back in the fourth. Try Beckham again. Rookie comes up there. Nicely done. One, two, three inning for line break in the seventh, but the Mariners still lead it six to four.
six four. Mariners in the lead as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Let's take a look at Mercedes Benz E class attention assist to the game. Home runs, Mike. Look at this. It Not almost makes you laugh sometimes, doesn't it? When he, <laughs> the way he hits them. <laughs> Give the man a trip to Vegas. <laughs> he hit the sign for crying out loud. And then a walk later, Kenji Jojima got one. He knew it too. Yes, sir. Gone for Kenji. His fourth. 14th RBI. First home run since May 25 in Oakland. Home run derby participants tonight here against the Chicago White Sox. Mark Lowe's the new pitcher. Waiting for Jack Wilson to get reset. Tommy shift is on. Tommy struck out his last two times up. Power against power here. Mark Lowe taking over for Sean White. Mark got that up there at 98. Tommy got it off the end of the bat. Tommy 0 for 3. Now Mark Lowe gets ahead quickly. Good pitch. 18 holds, ERA dropping. Opponent's batting average impressive and 44 strikeouts over 20 walks. The 0 2 to Tomey. 98 miles an hour again, just right on the outside corner. Tomey just Licking it out there about as defensive a swing as you're going to see from Jim Tomey. Think he gets to 600 home runs one day? It's 39 on August 27th. I believe this is his last year with the White Sox. He may not do it in a White Sox uniform. He may stick around another year or two. Wow. Oh, that was nasty. Nice job by Mark Lowe as Tomey Kays for the third time tonight. Second time in a row looking. Well, we talked about it when Mark can throw his slider for a strike. It's almost unfair for hitters. 98 miles an hour and then drops a backdoor slider on you. Not much you can do with that pitch. Next hitter is Paul Kernerko, another good power hitter. When you hit the power arm of Mark Lowe. Well, he went up there geared up, didn't he? Still couldn't get to it. Oh, and two. Chicago White Sox fighting for the Central Division lead. Picked up a half game on Detroit, which lost the Mariners are ahead of the White Sox in the wild card chase by a game and a half entering tonight. 0-2 to Kernerko. Take a look what Mark's done. This hit bat with Kernerko. Showing him a little everything. Two and two. Three straight sliders to Canerco. Two and two. Got him. Two down here in the eighth. That slide is devastating. Four of them in a row. First pitch, 98 on the outside black, and then he comes back with four straight sliders. You figure at some point, with a guy that can throw 98 miles an hour, he's going to come back with a fastball, and Canerco, four sliders, finally chases the last one. It's just not much you can do as a hitter. You have to hope that he makes a mistake with one of those pitches in the middle of the plate. Mike 
one to Quentin. Quentin's walked. Doubled off the Beltre's glove. And into the left field corner and delivered a two run single in the sixth. Reading Sean White. Had it on a 3 1 pitch. That's the last time the White Sox have scored. Team two of the series tomorrow, John Danks against Doug Fister. He is Major League starting debut. Got in a couple days ago. Told Don Wakamatsu. Boy, the air's kind of thin up here, huh? Wednesday's pitching matchup. Mark Burley, he had a perfect game earlier this year. No, no, two years ago. Felix Hernandez. I believe Felix has got a no no in his future. Two and one. Not anymore. Two and two. Oh, can Mark Lowe strike out the side? Not impressive. Speed gun numbers. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Mariners lead by two. Oh, I had to get a piece of that. Uh, he barely was able to get a piece of it. Pretty good slider. Again, that pitch more on the plate than the ones he was throwing to Knurkel, and that's the only reason why, because Quinn was definitely swinging. At that pitch, whether it was on the plate or not, the hitter you have to get things started a little bit early when a guy's pumping 98 miles an hour up there. You better do it again at two and two. Against Carlos Quentin. One more time at two and two. Punched in the center field. Gutierrez has got it inning over. Very effective work by Mark Lowe. Gets a great round of applause here at Safe Gold Field. The Mariners by two. Today's Tracer Technology brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. The Tracer system uses three cameras to track every pitch. With this tracking information, we can show you where the ball crosses the front plane of the plate. Our system is accurate to within one inch. We then take this data and convert it to our EQC Tracer graphic. Thank you, Safe Go Field. Here we go, right above the A in Safe Go Field. Good to have you with us here at the ballpark with 21.
21,049 having an outstanding time here with the Mariners leading six to four. Ken Griffey Jr. is going to lead it off. And how about Jr. His last two times up, he's singled. Singled in the sixth, singled in the fourth. That drove in two. And it got the Mariners on the board. Octavio Dotel. Fourth pitch used by Ozzie Guillen tonight. Guys had his injury problems over the year, but he can still over the years, but he can still get it up there fast. Like a lot of these guys out of this bullpen. Remember, remember he was a starter with the Mets when he came up. Yeah, he used to be mid upper 90s. With the Houston. He was a closer with the Astros, wasn't yep. he? Two and one the junior. Fastball gets Junior. One out here in the eighth. The Mariner fans stay up to date all season long. Team text and video alerts for your mobile phone. Text Get Mariners to 65246 to sign up right now. Here's Adrian Beltre. Beltre one for three. Infield hit, bounced into a double play. Flight out the left. Artsman, David Artsman, getting ready, still healing from that boil from his buttocks a few days ago. They're treating it a couple times a day. Center field, but second Nick did not get a good jump. He saw the swing. Beltre trying to give it a thought. He went about a third of the way and then slammed on the break. So he drops one in front of but second swing fully. Absolutely field. did. But Sednik ends up actually taking a step or two back. They look at the swing by Adrian Beltre. It's a full swing, but he hits it right off the end of the bat and it falls into center field. And Pot Sednik couldn't make up the ground. He was watching Adrian the whole way. One out base runner. Here's Russell Brannion, homered. 0 2 pitch off the Vegas sign on mezzanine deck. And right field is last time up in the sixth. Base for Beltre, his tenth. Jack Wilson with a stolen base earlier tonight, and that gives Adrian ten, so he is second to Ichiro. Main second to Ichiro, who has 23. Chance to pick up. Insurance run now time is called. Tell a strikeout pitcher struck out 92 last year most strikeouts among relievers in the American League off the end of the bat. Back on gets the play two down. Yeah. 
play jumping Jack Flash for Jack Wilson as he comes up here in the eighth. Jack hitless tonight, but he walked and stole a base in the sixth inning. Tell out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He's been with the Mets, Houston, Oakland, the Yankees, Kansas City, Atlanta, and now year two with the White Sox. Arms been getting ready. John Wetland, the both been coach. Watching every movement out on the field. It's like the tell throws that heavy fastball. He does. He has some movement on it. Looks like a two seam fastball. Our last one, 96 miles an hour, but probably a lot like Lowe's. I think Mark Lowe throws a heavy fastball too. He's gone. Wilson knew it. That'll do it for the eighth. Eight the books here at Safeco Field. Six to four Mariners. Time to tell it to the DA. Here comes David Artsma. Seattle Mariners baseball on FSN is brought to you by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. Welcome to the show, indeed. David Archman on for the close here. Six to four Mariners here at Safe Cove Field. 21,049 on hand, first of three. Great week here, great opportunity for the Mariners as they continue to battle for the wild card. Starting the day, eight games behind the Angels in the American League West race, four and a half behind Boston in the wild card chase. Boston's won tonight, six to five. The White Sox in town. They are a game and a half behind the Mariners in fifth place in the wild card race. David Ardsma. Don Wakamatsu's offense done a pretty good job here tonight. And for Arjuna, he's got 26 saves. He'll start with Alexi Ramirez way upstairs, ball one. It's a good point on the offense. It seems like when a club scores a bunch of runs, the next day they really struggle. Mariners with 11 yesterday come back and score six today. Mark Kotze comes out on deck. He'll pinch hit for Knicks. One and one to Ramirez. 0 for 3. Veteran Mark Katze came over from Boston. Archman set the 1 1. Fouled off 1 and 2. Great 
breakout year for Ernstman. Is number one among American League relievers with a 1.58 ERA. The pitch line drive to the gap. The bat of Ramirez. That'll bring the tying run to the plate. Mark Katze. This will be just his seventh game as a White Sox. He's four for 20. With Boston 245, he hit part time. Action had some injuries. Left-handed hitters on deck. Everyday catcher. That's it. Came over 28th of July. For Brian Anderson and some cash. The 1-1 one -one. swing. Yes. Nice split by Artsma. Pumped a couple fastballs up there, and he was way out in front of that split. With a split finger grip right there. One, two. Arts with still with some work in front from Katze. Good lifetime pinch hitter. 373. Good numbers. Ramirez at first, the pitch. Jay Przinsky's on deck. There is a double play depth. 2-2. Two -two. Kenji tried to frame that one. Yep. Look at the tracer. All the pitches away. That's typical of guys that close games. They could beat them the other way. The last pitch off the plate. So he's run a full count to Katze. Saunders is right there. Michael Saunders with the catch. One out. School year. It's just around the corner. So why not go back to school in style with a Ken Griffey Jr. backpack? That's right. Sunday, August 30th. Mariners Royals. All kids 14 and under take home this unique backpack. Courtesy of Pepsi, Hagen, and Top Foods. For tickets, visit Mariners.com. Tell you what, he'll be the happiest kid on his block when he gets hooked up. AJ Przinsky, 0 for 5 as a pinch hitter this year. Strike one. Brzezinski, left handed hitter, pinch hitting for Ramon Castro, who started behind the dish for Chicago. Strike. Oh, and two. She's grinding out every pitch. Oh, and two. Guards was thrown hard, and I last pitched ninety six miles an hour. There's some power arms. That's a that's the walk formula. Low in the eighth, Artsman the ninth. Mariners trying to get their 59th win. 0 and 2 to Przinsky.
Vladimir Guerrero with a home run. Here's the pitch. Punched foul by Przinsky. Another good split by Arsenal. Sure was. Angels in Tampa Bay and Anaheim in a wild one. Eight seven Angels seventh inning. Guerrero's homered for the second time tonight. It was career home run number 400. One more time. Couple of splits in there at 87 and 88 miles an hour. Everything away from Pierzynski. 2-2. Well, two, two. Good pitch and a good rip. Well, I'll tell you what, Katze and now Pierzynski, they're making Argent work. They throw a lot of pitches to these two hitters. One out, one on. They're just trying to lock up a win here. The 2-2 two -two to Brzezinski. Ninth pitch coming up. Some battle. Took something off. Turn two. We'll get at least one. Wilson got it. Game over. Mariners win it. 6 4. Take the first of three from the White Sox. Sean White picks up the win. He's 3 and 2. Gavin Floyd, the loss. He's 9 and 7. The save to Arjma. The DA is 27th. And the Mariners. Are now six and three in the month of August, and they pick up a full game on these White Sox in the wild card chase. Once again, second game in a row. Russell Brannion goes deep, and boy, did he hit it off the Vegas sign. His 27th home run, and Kenji Jojima, first home run since May 25th in Oakland. He checks in with the long ball. So a good night all around for the Mariners, who win it 6-4. to four. They do it in two hours and 42 minutes. Back with Game 2 tomorrow night. Look forward to being with you then. For Mike Flowers, I'm Dave Sims. Coming up next.